Good morning. Uh, my name is Minna Marshall. I'm here today to talk to you about iBrain Gym, the next generation of visual intelligence and literacy development. Uh, so we're at the AI Expo, and you're probably thinking, what are guys doing here that works with lit literacy? I'm very excited to share with you what we've been doing and developing over the past uh, 10 years and 30 years of research that has gone into the system. So let's start at the beginning. Um, I think the challenges that we're all experiencing in training, uh, in productivity, uh, the higher demand in the workplace, you know, just managing your workload has shown to all of us that the fourth industrial revolution is going to make a higher demand on the workforce. Uh, this not only has to do with um, how fast we read, how um, we have to be able to learn, unlearn and relearn new information much faster and um, be able to work with information in a more creative way. So aside from that or added to that, we are also facing these oceans of information that we have to work with. Um, and the problem is that our brain is not wired to read. And when your cognitive load exceeds the working memory, your intellectual capacity decreases. And we have to find ways to train and to work with uh, information and to train ourselves how to work in a better way with it. Um, currently, let's just stand for a moment and look at the challenges we're experiencing regarding the workforce of the future. You know that it is estimated that six out of 10 children globally are not learning. Um, 2030 projections are indicating that we will have around 800 million students that worldwide that would have either dropped out of school or graduated without the basic skills needed to be employable. Um, it's even worse in our low-income countries. When we look at low income, it's about 92% of students or workers that will have primary school levels, 51% in middle income countries and 30%, even 30% in our high income countries that won't be employable. So currently it is estimated that illiteracy is costing the global economy 800 billion pounds a year and we definitely have to do something about this. Um, so. What we did is took action. iBrain Gym uh, was designed to help our users to see more, to read faster, to learn quicker, and to remember better. Uh, it is built to enhance and to help us to develop uh, the training of uh, processing volumes of information. How to use new knowledge, combine it with knowledge or information that you already know. How to use this, create a platform so that you can advance knowledge and create new answers for challenges that we are facing. Um, iBrain Gym is designed to use the science of neuromodulation and combine that with the physics of muscle training and muscle memory through the processes of reading. And at the end of the day, the, the aim is to develop visual intelligence. Um, so exciting stuff, you know that um, Research has proven over the last number of years that our brain is a self-organizing creative system. Um, this is the fun part of what we do. Every skill and ability that you have has been constructed in specific areas or an area of your brain through training and application. So uh, we call this the muscle building part of the brain. Um, the, that is why repetition uh, strengthens the power of choice and action. So as you are doing certain things more, it becomes easier and easier to do it. Um, and as you leave certain things, you're not doing it. Um, that is things that you easily forget. So learning is in effect um, connecting neurons. It is developing neural pathways and enhancing your neural networks. And this is all possible because of neuroplasticity. So this is the good news for those of you who are uh, over 40, 50, maybe even 70. Our brains are still uh, producing neurons even up into our 70s. And this is uh, what is used to learn. So uh, as long as you are creating new neurons, you can keep on learning, you can keep on improving. And uh, neuroplasticity makes it possible for us 
to, to form these new neural networks, these new neural connections throughout life. Um, and that's why you can keep on learning uh, even if you are over 70. The challenge that we're experiencing with literacy and working with visual information is that our brain is not wired naturally for reading. So uh, if it isn't something that you have been trained in or that has been developed, it can become a lifelong challenge. Uh, using visual information to make intelligent choices becomes almost an impossibility uh, when we are not functionally literate. So the impact uh, of the pandemic has exacerbated the previous fault lines that we've had in education and training. Um, and if we don't take action uh, regarding this issue, we will be facing a tsunami of illiteracy. Um, and illiteracy is one of the main causes of delinquency, poverty, frustration, um, a major cause of loss of productivity in the workplace and a decrease, decrease in financial health. And um, so we should all sit up, take note of this and uh, see what we can possibly do to improve this current situation. Um, visual intelligence is at the end of the day, the ability then to process, to understand and to express visual information. It is the basis of, um, the basis of visual intelligence is reading uh, and with comprehension that is. So visual intelligence forms the basis from where we can build and advance our communities. If our communities do not become visually intelligent, they won't be able to progress from where they are now um, to advance to a next level of development. So crucial that we do work with development of these crucial foundational skills. We're going to look at um, the three uh, measurable factors that we use in iBrain Gym. Everything that we do is measurable against international norms and standards. So our process is develop uh, vision, visual processing, which combines optic motor skills and perceptual skills. And uh, the second factor that we looked at is the cognitive development factor, which combines all understanding of the information that you're working with. Here, we're not only working with lower order or divergent or convergent thinking skills, we're also working with our higher order thinking skills that is divergent. Um, and at the end of the day, all of that must come together in the third factor, which is action, interpret, understand. And the action, interpret, understand factor gives us a great level that we can measure your functionality when working with visual information. Um, and this, of course, is all measurable against international norms and standards, as I have mentioned. So let's take a look at iBrain Gym. Uh, iBrain Gym, first off, gives you access to a free placement. In the free placement, you'll be able to uh, measure your current status against uh, other users of the system, as well as international norms and standards, before you can have a sneak peek of what the system looks like in the first session. So iBrain Gym and its range of activities is designed to develop these foundational learning skills and to bridge the gap between the individual and the information they must work with. Um, it is personalized, fun and challenging exercises. Some of them you will think you're just playing games, but at, at, throughout the whole process, we are actually busy building those neural pathways to help you to move information faster from point A to point B within the brain. Um, and uh, then some of them are going to be a little bit more uh, demanding. Uh, we have to stretch some of those muscles in the gym. I'm sure those of you who have been to the gym understand that. Uh, it is an individualized system, as I've said. Every exercise takes the outcomes to build the next exercise on for the individual working within the system. Um, it, it therefore is targeted individualized development that takes place. Um, there's a virtual coach built in that takes you through the steps of the game plan. So initially when you sign up, you will decide when you want to do your training and 
you will build a game plan and the virtual coach then keeps reminding you of when your lessons would be or your sessions would be and to do certain of the exercises. Uh, all of it is built to achieve better quality visual processing, to, to teach you skills and strategies like connecting prior knowledge, how to find out what is the best strategy to unlock the information in a specific uh, portion of material that you're working with, maximize comprehension, how to learn to see the bigger picture, but at the same time, be able to remember the finest details of what you are busy working with. Um, access more information, connect the use of the known information to become functional and creative, to build a platform for new answers, for better future advancement. So who would need iBrain Gym? Well, first of all of you would realize that our schools, our students at school really need to develop these skills properly. Uh, tertiary students also use the system to advance them, uh, ensure for better throughput from first year to, uh, to get better quality degrees, students at the end of the day. Um, in corporate training, it's also important. Your personal development, I think that is, goes without saying that if you work with vast amounts of visual, uh, visual information, this is something that you should do to develop yourself personally. And then of course, um, a big portion of what we do is where companies come in and sponsor schools and nonprofits to be able to implement this system within schools uh, that students that wasn't previously able to get access and develop these skills so that our workforce for the future can be better developed. Um, now uh, I have a bit of time left. I think we can share a couple of success stories. Uh, we have a number of private schools that are using the system. Um, schools uh, and public schools where we see great advances. I'm going to share a little bit more about some of the results we are seeing in the next um, slide. Uh, then, of course, tertiary institutions like Stellenbosch University, where they are using it as a course inclusive offering for some of the students at some of the faculties. Okay, so we're going to look at a number of the success stories that we have seen with the system implemented. Uh, various private schools and public schools are using it, uh, where we are see on, seeing on average uh, four to six year improvement of skill levels at students, primary and secondary school students. Um, I'm thinking of Stellenbosch University, where the course is um, offered as a course inclusive um, part of a number of the faculty's material. Uh, you'll have um, mostly first year students working on the system there um, to assist them to bridge the gap between secondary school and primary school. Oftentimes we think that when students go to study at university they have acquired all the skills that is needed. Um, uh, but the truth is that a number of students are still struggling with uh, reading fluency um, and therefore it's very crucial for them to uh, be able to develop these skills and strategies that they need. Um, then as well abroad we have implemented at, uh, in the Bahamas, we've seen some really good uh, development taking place there. Um, Namibia uh, as, as well uh, up in the Rundu campus and then in Malaysia at uh, schools and uh, university. So, uh, I think the big impact for me is on a personal level when I experienced, for instance, a story that I um, heard about a lady that was working as a cleaner at a company. And the moment that her literacy levels improved, she was able to actually read what um, the, the, the materials that she needs to use to clean certain areas of the building with, how to work with it properly, and of course, um, uh, impact in her personal life with her children and her family, where she could better relate to the world that she's living in. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges um, that we address with this type of uh, technology, where we are able to empower people to begin to look at the world around them in a different way, where they can take responsibility um, for their own environment, for their own life, and make um, intelligent choices regarding uh, how to move uh, to the next phase of their life, maybe. 
Um, and, I, and in the current situation where jobs are changing faster than you can say industry 4.0, um, where we have to relearn new things so quickly, um, where we have to look at information that is coming to us and decide uh, what, what would be, what is the truth, what is not the truth. How do we handle all these different varieties of things that are coming to us? Visual intelligence becomes a key factor of being successful um, in, in the life that we have to live nowadays. So that is the success stories. We can stay there for a, a long, long time, just looking at the impact that we've had in individual lives. Um, but you, you're welcome to go and check it out on our Facebook page and have a look at some of the videos there. Um, just the next slide that we are going to show you now, you can look at the grade four, grade seven and grade, uh, tertiary student outcomes that we achieved. 120,000 user profiles have been the basis for what we are building. And we're seeing an average of five years improvement across the board. Um, for me, the grade four students are very, very important. If you think of the 2016 Pearls outcomes, the international evaluation where South Africa ranked last, um, we found that uh, 70 over percent of our grade fours cannot understand what they are reading. Um, this group of grade fours, you will see there's actually been a significant increase in their cognitive development as well as a six year improvement of skill levels. And then of course the tertiary students, if you can jump over to that, this specific group, 3000 over students, uh, data that we have here, a 4% increase in their cognitive development as well as um, a nine year improvement of skill level. So the good news is it's not only junior primary. This skill can and should be developed and improved right through our lives. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, or what you are doing, uh, you, you can log in on iBrain Gym and it will take you through the steps so that we can see true social impact um, uh, in, in our environments, in our communities. So it doesn't matter where you are or where you come from. Um, our aim is to develop uh, citizens that can be really a part of building a better future. We want to see social impact and we want to see people take responsibility for their own lives because they can make intelligent choices uh, with, the with the information that they have received. So the outcomes of our systems are measurable and it impacts directly on the way people see, work with and remember visual information. Our focus is to improve lifestyles, to transform educational experiences. I mean, you can just think if you're a student who are able to really understand the information that you have to work with, how that can transform the whole impact of that educational experience. Um, we want to connect our students to whatever they are busy with. And at the end of the day, the aim is to create collective intelligence not just a few people but to get a community to be impacted on how to build a better future so we welcome you to be a part of what we are doing please go and check out our websites the contact details are on the screen and we look forward to hear from you how we can become partners in building a better future thank you